Yes. You can see how tall the grass is over there. Gaan staan gaan goed aan die gras. See, illusion is nearly gone in the grass. We're actually scared of lions attacking us. <laughs> see, there was a cat in the grass and you didn't even see it. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to, back to One Step at the Time Farmstead. I'm Alicia and I'm so happy you are here with us. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to One Step at a Time Farmstead. I'm Lucas and this is Lucian and we are so happy that you are here with us today. Today we just want to catch you guys up on the garden and show you the state that we are in you are aware of the problems i'm having with the lawnmower and yeah if you yeah just look at how tall the grass is you can see how tall the grass is over there gaan staan gaan daar die gras The illusion is nearly gone in the grass. We're actually scared of lions attacking us. <laughs> see, there was a cat in the grass and you didn't even see it. Um, just here by the gardens as well, the raised bed gardens. You can see it's starting to overgrow. And yeah, so something we just need to give our attention to. Yeah, so basically we've been having uh, problems. Our uh, electrical lawnmower, uh, the motor of the lawnmower burned out, like I explained previously, and I'm trying to innovate and get something going so I can mow the lawn and in the meantime my wife decided to buy us a brush cutter wheat eater as it's known in South Africa but it's a brush cutter heavy or heavy duty wheat eater today is going to be a bit of like a review on it you know just my personal opinion but it's not sponsored or but I am actually quite impressed with this brush cutter. Yeah, so we went online and we searched for brush cutters and found one at Turf Master. On the online promotion, we found this Tanaka Pro. It's a 52cc uh, two-stroke engine and compared to other brands, even with smaller engines, but other brands in uh, more or less the same range, it came out at about a quarter of the price, which is very cheap and it made us a bit skeptical. But yeah, we went ahead and purchased one two days ago, and I must say I am very, very impressed. It comes with a harness, uh, so it takes all the pressure off or the strain off of your arms. Um, all the weight of the machine, which is only about seven and a half kilograms, um, is resting comfortably on your shoulders, and you've got your hands that can freely move. It's a double hand bar, kind of like a Harley Davidson motorcycle feeling that you get <laughs> on operating this thing. Yes, here it is. 
It doesn't look like much, but it is a lot. Shorter than what it used to be. Yes, a lot shorter. Okay. And uh, look here on the sides of the pavement. That was overgrown. Okay, just a quick update on our garden as well. Let's quickly show you what is going on. Um, our squashes actually came and climbed nicely on the trellis. Uh, we showed you some of the squash fruit that is starting to form in a previous video. And I just want to show you the size that it's at now. Uh, yeah, look at the size of it there, of it there, um, let me just put the camera down. It is almost ready to um, harvest. So uh, you uh, put your head next to it, it's... It is almost as big as my head. Yeah, it's about the size of Lucian's head, <laughs> our Herbert squash there. So, yeah, going quite well. Um, we did have a bit of a dry spell, um, so I removed um, the smaller little squashes that formed next to it over here. Uh, one went a bit rotten and I removed another one or two of them. But on the other plants, oops. Yeah. Over there is another one forming about the size of Lucian's hand. Put your hand next to it, Lucian. Uh, maybe a bit smaller still. Okay. And here's uh, another one. Here's our beans. Uh, that one's a bit big. Oh, we must harvest today. Uh, there's another squash over there. Well, all over there is a little baby one forming there. We are, we are going to try for the squashes to go like over here. The unlike um uh, uh we know we deserve all the other we're gonna not to transplant them when these are already here and then we can walk through and pick these. <laughs> oh that is my dream place. Okay, yeah, you can see the squashies up squash ease. Okay, here we can see that the squash um, is, well, has already grown over the top and it's following the trellis to the front here and where we are then trading it on this wire over here to cover our beans. Some of our onions uh, already came to an end there you can see is one that fell over um, one of the spring onions and we harvested a couple of them and must say that they are delicious it's completely different to store-bought onions in in taste um i'm like now me um i hate I've hated onions because it was stored, but, but now when I taste it now, this, it was very sweet. 
Ik heb een beetje 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 een uh, then our cucurbit, watermelon, sweet melons, and I've got some uh, cucumbers, Ashley cucumbers in there as well. Yeah, uh, they struggled a bit under pest uh, pressure, and I just sowed a couple of seeds more of each, and then we had uh, actually a, a nice healthy a spell of rainfall for a day or two and they just took off and popped off so i think it was the drought um, combined with a bit of um, pest pressure and but now it seems to take off okay over here is where we are doing our tomatoes Um, you have seen me struggle with the tomatoes this year, um, and eventually we took a tomato uh, from the fridge that was a bit overripe, and I just came and squirted the uh, seeds of the tomato uh, directly into the garden and yeah seems like now there is some tomatoes I'm still um, trying to figure out whether the problem is with the seed which I can't think really because it's two different packets um, and then well, I believe it's the wrong time of year, the temperature variations and all of that stuff that played a role. So I need to weed this garden. Well, all my gardens. Um, but yeah, now eventually we are starting to grow some tomatoes. Yeah, this side I obviously also need to get in and weed over here um, but in this garden oops no we need to weed over here but in this garden I decided to plant my butternut squash and yeah there you can see some of the seedlings coming up um, and I still need to add some compost and mulch over here. Now, over here is also some squashlings. Oh, I just need to weed, get all of these weeds out. So we can actually show off our butternut squashes. Three.
Okay. I apologize. I just realized some, something. I am not wearing my safety gear. Um, so, Lucian, will you please <laughs> go get my safety goggles and my earmuffs? Okay. okay. Safety goggles on. Again, apologies. Remember, safety first. Oops, safety first always. Um, still looking for the earmuffs, but it's fine. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm concerned about something getting to, into my eye. Uh, so let's continue. Ah, there we go. Just to show you, after we mowed the lawn a little bit. <laughs> after we mowed the lawn a bit, Lucian can take a nap on the grass. But it looks so much, so much better. And at least this will give me time to uh, try and f uh, fix our lawnmower 
Yeah, so it looks a lot better after we used the brush cutter to uh, mow the lawn a bit. Uh, but at least this will uh, give me time to uh, try and fix or rebuild um, the lawn mower. I've got another uh, two-stroke petrol engine, also 52cc, similar to this one. Um, that was actually on my bass boat um, that I'm going to try and fit uh, to the lawnmower and see if that works. I'm a bit nervous about it because, you know, it's uh, high RPMs um, and running a blade off that. The thought is scary, but I've already, the engine was seized up, um, and I've actually repair, repaired my first engine in my life. So yeah, we learn a lot. So I'm going to try and fit that engine to the lawnmower to mow the lawn. But at least this will buy me time to actually put some attention to that project and the garden looks neater so i'll be a lot more active that's one thing i found when the garden is so overgrown and um a hot mess um i don't tend to come to the garden quite that often to work in the garden but when it's nice and neat one tends to well i definitely tend to try and be in the garden a lot more often um, it also gives me the opportunity to actually have a nice sit down with Lucian. We had some nice conversations uh, today about homesteading and about creating content and what do you do in winter time. Um, how will the channel go on? And I explained to him, you know, the different seasons and different functions um, of the homestead and how it used to be in the olden days when people weren't that dependent on the uh, food supply chain and the utilities uh, provided by the government or municipality. That was quite an interesting conversation and to see where his interest is and um, you know how the channel will continue um, and he's very interested in doing his own little thing and he asked me you know if he can have one of these little race bed gardens and maybe do his own content and stuff like that because he wants to learn and he sees the importance um, of learning and that actually as a father makes me quite proud which um, at the end of the day he sees what I do as an example, and it's it's new to us as a family, um, because it's always been convenient to go and buy your groceries and your produce at the grocery store. Thank you, boy. Um, I'm telling our listeners. Yes, I heard. Okay, so for him to have that interest in. Um, also trying and learning and seeing the necessity of being as self-sufficient as possible and him uh, wanting to, to learn at this young age because um, I'm only learning most of the stuff now. Uh, my grandparents used to um, preserve and you know they had their own chickens um, when they still were healthy enough to do it um they had their own chickens they had their little veggie garden and my grandma used to uh, preserve you know all kinds of um vegetables and foods um, but unfortunately i was too young to learn at that stage and it's something that we never learned from our parents uh, yes, home cooking and stuff like that 
we learned, but we never really had a veggie garden, garden growing up. I remember once um, my father had a ve veggie garden for a season um, and my mum baked cookies and stuff, but she never preserved um, and put away because everything started getting so modern and, you know, with the uh, um, grocery shops having everything you need um, and it was convenient so I believe there's a a big gap in our generation on you know how to preserve and how to grow and uh, uh, raise your own food um, and I'm learning now from my grandma's cookbooks that I inherited basically um, well there's one specific one um, and where they teach canning and preserving and you know all this stuff and I'm learning now yeah oh, there's a few things um, that I've seen that I've tried that I've done learning from YouTube and other sources but you know, to now find from my grandparents uh, and my great-grandparents uh, cookbooks and stuff where they actually taught, you know, canning and preser preserving and um, stuff like that. It's, it's completely new to me. And I believe it's so valuable to get these skills and knowledge. And it makes me proud to see that Lucian also sees the necessity in that. I mean, he's growing up in a generation now where we do struggle with electricity and water and we have to start thinking about how we can keep our food um, preserved and growing healthy foods and stuff like that. And when we raised the chickens, he was always there ready with his chores and um, helping me doing everything uh, even when we uh, uh, processed our chickens butchered and, and processed our chickens um, he was the one helping me and you see his interest there but even more than that for him to understand the necessity of starting to learn the skills now um makes you know it makes me really proud um so yes i think standing and supporting him you know creating his own little garden and raising his own chicks or wherever his interest takes him let's let's support him and cultivate that interest um because it's only skills that is going to be beneficial for him in the future. Um, a couple of years ago, we've seen how volatile and fractured our food supply chain actually is. And, you know, known as the Zuma riots, where, you know, with the riots, they could bring the country to its knees within three days. Um, and cut off our uh, food supply chain and yeah for him to learn not to be dependent or fully dependent on that food supply chain um, and to be more self-sufficient and secure in his own uh, skills and food security Will only will only benefit him in so many ways. Hello, it's me. Um, Lucian, I'm not just quickly showing you an uh, update on our chickens. Uh, now our little one is getting is getting their feathers, and our and our big ones is booties. But. Uh, but that the little black one they teach they he teach all both of them um, a lesson and as well now those two little ones we don't 
we still don't know if they are they are um hens or roosters but we'll find out eventually that's <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah um thank you for spending time with us today we really do appreciate it uh, if we can ask you one big favor that would be to like and subscribe and comment <laughs> yeah like the video if you like this content so please subscribe to our channel and help us grow our community and comment interact with us give us some suggestions on what you would like to see more of um and send Lucian some love. <laughs> um, my first video is uh, um, we are uh, quickly busy. I think our uh, next video is gonna be mine. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so Lucian also wants to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's see what what he can come up with. Um. Thank you for spending time with us. We love you and God bless you. And yeah, share our, uh, thank you for sharing in our journey. Goodbye. We're going to laugh with the